There's a lot of confusion as to what HDMI ARC and what HDMI eARC are uh, exactly what they are and what exactly they're capable of. What's up guys, Jonah Mathis here. So today we are gonna go over HDMI ARC and HDMI eARC, uh, going over basically everything about them. Uh, I do have a previous video on this topic, but there were some things that I got wrong in that last video. So I wanna correct them here, and I also wanna go into more detail as to what HDMI eARC is and what those improvements are. Now, it's a little dark in here, so uh, here, let's do this real quick. Uh, computer, turn on desk lights. Ooh, now that's nice. So uh, I'm trying to spice up my videos a little more, add some nice lighting in. Uh, I'll be changing up some of my configurations here to make these videos a little more high quality. So uh, if you're not subscribed to the channel now, I'd appreciate it if you click subscribe. Uh, I know I just had a my Sonos Arc review video that brought in a ton of people to the channel. So if you're new to the channel, welcome. If there's anything you'd like to see from me, please leave that in the comments down below. But let's jump into things. So first, let's go over HDMI Arc. And Arc stands for Audio Return Channel. Now, essentially what that means is that audio is being sent in the reverse direction of what it would normally be sent down an HDMI cable. So typically we'd use HDMI Arc for sound bars and for audio video receivers. So typically with uh, you know, some sound bars, you have HDMI cables plugging into that sound bar from other devices. So let's say a Fire TV, Blu-ray player, Xbox, you plug HDMI from those devices into your sound bar, and then from your sound bar, there's an HDMI output that goes to your TV. Well, let's say you need to, uh, it's a smart TV, and you're playing Netflix on that smart TV. Well, theoretically, without HDMI arc, there's no way for that Netflix audio signal to be sent back to the soundbar. Now with HDMI arc, that allows that audio signal from Netflix to be sent back to your soundbar. And this is the same case for audio video receivers. So all of your devices connect to the audio video receiver, and then from the HDMI output on that receiver, it goes to your TV or projector or whatever. And then uh, if any audio needs to be sent back, then you'd use HDMI arc and it would use that signal to send it back to the receiver so it can play through the speakers. So soundbar and AV receiver, same concept, just a little bit different as to how they're set up. There's two things I wanna mention about HDMI ARC. The first thing is uh, HDMI CEC, and that stands for Consumer Electronics Control. Essentially what that is, is that allows IR signals to be sent from your TV uh, back to whatever device it's connected to. So if it's connected to a soundbar or an AV receiver, then theoretically you can use the TV's remote control and it's gonna send audio signals or those IR signals back to uh, the soundbar or receiver and control that device. It can also control you know, a Fire TV, uh, Blu-ray player, it can control those through CEC as well. And the next thing is that HDMI ARC really works with most HDMI cables. As long as you're not using a really, really old HDMI cable, you're probably perfectly fine. You don't have to worry about it. But if you, are, if you are having some issues with HDMI ARC, maybe consider trying a newer cable just to see if that fixes your issue. All right, so now I wanna go over the thing that I messed up in my last video. Now, that last video was my sixth YouTube video, so cut me a little slack there. I'll cut myself some slack as well. Uh, I went back, did some more research. I talked to a lot of people in the comments on some of my videos, and uh, I have a much better understanding on it, so this will be helpful to a lot of people out there. Now, in my previous HDMI ARC video, I said that HDMI ARC was not capable of sending Adobe Atmos or DTSX audio signal. That's not entirely true. So let's go over that real quick. Now, Adobe Atmos and DTSX are object-based audio codecs. And to put this simply, it is the most immersive surround sound signal that you can create um, in a home. So besides going to like a normal uh, movie theater, which they actually use Adobe Atmos and DTSX in movie theaters, it's just scaled on a much larger level. When a home, it's on a much smaller level, but it's still an extremely immersive surround sound experience. You can hear the things going above you because of upward firing or ceiling speakers. You can hear things behind you from the sides, from the front. So it's very immersive and a very, just a really cool experience to have. Uh, now that we understand what Dolby Atmos and DTSX are, let's go over how HDMI ARC can send these signals. So I did get one part right in my previous video. So HDMI ARC cannot send DTSX. Now, uh, from everything I've read, I looked all over the place for this and I couldn't find anything about 
it being able to support DTS-X. You don't get object-based audio codecs with DTS, but with Dolby Atmos, you can. Now you can get Adobe Atmos signal via Adobe Digital Plus audio codec. Now to put this simply, Dolby Digital Plus is a lossy or compressed version of Dolby Atmos. So it's not gonna be uncompressed and lossless. Uh, so we are gonna lose a little bit of data in the transmission, which means we're losing a little bit of audio quality, but it's still gonna sound really good. Now, not all TVs are gonna support Dolby Digital Plus over HDMI ARC. And that's something I need to stress here because it's not very simple to understand, unfortunately. There's not a blatant TV spec that you can go through the user manual or the specs and just say like, you know, Dolby Digital Plus supported over HDMI ARC. It's probably gonna say it supports Dolby Digital Plus or it supports Dolby Digital, but it's still not exactly clear if it's gonna support the transmission of that over HDMI ARC. So I really, I don't have a better answer for you. Uh, you may just need to do a little bit of searching on your TV or if you're looking to buy a new TV. Um, most new TVs probably support it. I'll just put that out there. If it's a brand new TV that's not eARC, it's just regular ARC, you should be fine. But uh, I would still do a little bit of research prior to kind of assuming that. I hope all that made sense and that you have a more clear understanding of HDMI ARC and the different audio signals that can be sent through it. Now I wanna go over HDMI eARC. Now HDMI eARC is much, much better than HDMI ARC. Originally HDMI ARC had a lot of issues and it wasn't until just a couple years ago that it started supporting Dolby Digital Plus. ARC did get a little upgrade, but eARC is the upgrade that everyone's been waiting for and been wanting for a long time. Now, regular HDMI ARC supports about anywhere from one to three megabits of data per second. Uh, HDMI eARC supports 37 megabits of data per second. So that's, uh, that's a lot more data. And that means it basically supports any uncompressed or lossless audio codec or audio format. So that means a full DTSX or Dolby Atmos uh, or technically Dolby True HD is what it's called where it's lossless, uncompressed Dolby Atmos, supports those with no issues whatsoever. Some other really nice improvements is that uh, you no longer have to worry about lip sync issues. This is all done automatically now. With HDMI ARC, uh, some systems didn't get the syncing quite right, so there were manual adjustments you could make, but that's not the easiest to do when you're watching when you're watching something. So uh, that's nice, it's done automatically now. It no longer relies on HDMI CEC for discovery and pairing. So it actually uses its own dedicated data channel to exchange information between the two devices. So between a TV and a sound bar or a TV and an audio video receiver, it uses a dedicated channel to exchange that information and they're talking to each other to understand which audio formats they both support. So that's not something you kind of have to guess on anymore. You have to manually set. HDMI eARC handles this for you so that both devices know exactly what audio formats and surround sound formats they can support. And then they choose the best one that's gonna work uh, most optimally. And it's good to mention that HDMI eARC is backwards compatible with HDMI ARC. Uh, for instance, in my living room actually, I have the Sonos ARC, which has only a single HDMI port on it, which is eARC. Now my TV only has a regular HDMI ARC port. Well, luckily HDMI eARC is backwards compatible, so I'm still able to use the HDMI ARC with, or the Sonos ARC with my TV. Now uh, I am limited on the audio formats that can be sent from the TV to the Sonos ARC because it's only ARC, it's not eARC. So from my TV, it actually sends Dolby Digital Plus so I get a compressed or a lossy uh, Dolby Atmos signal to the soundbar, which it still sounds fantastic. If you haven't checked out that video, uh, I'll leave a link in the description. You can also click up there uh, to go look at it as well. Uh, a lot of people really enjoyed that video. I went really in depth on it. It's a great soundbar. I still really love listening to it and using it. So if you're interested in that, definitely check it out. I'd say the biggest takeaway from this video is that HDMI eARC solves most of the issues we had with audio. Uh, it doesn't matter if the audio is going upstream or downstream from a device. It's going to be the highest quality possible as long as both devices are eARC compatible. So no more worrying about signals being downgraded or compressed any. We'll get full uncompressed audio, 
no matter where it's coming from. So that's just, it's really awesome. We've dealt with issues like this for so many years and eARC is slowly starting to emerge into the market on most devices. So uh, it's really gonna solve a lot of issues. I hope you enjoyed the video. Hope you learned something from this. I do apologize if you watched my previous HDMI ARC video. Um, I did have some incorrect information in that one, but this one should have all of the correct information in it. Uh, again, if you liked the video, please click like. If you didn't like it, click dislike. Let me know how you felt. If you're not subscribed to the channel, please click subscribe, and I'll see you guys in the next one.